freekeen.com Traditionally, I'm an anti-pacifist. And it may come as sort of a surprise to some of you pro-military people that my anti-pacifism roots actually continue on. This despite all the nasty things I've had to say about the U.S. military. The fact is, although peaceniks are right about the wars the U.S. is involved in, and although they're right when they say tax money shouldn't be used for warfare, that doesn't address the real problem of how a free country, if there ever is one, uh, goes about defending itself against the likes of Hitler and maybe the likes of Obama. Bush Obama. I think actually most of us liberty folk can more or less agree that as long as a person is not initiating force, or as long as a country, let's say, is not initiating force or harmful fraud against sentient beings, it's not necessarily wrong for it to defend itself. It may not even be an expedient. Now, a lot of Liberty folks go so deep into the peacenik thing that this gets covered over, glossed over, misunderstood, but the ability to mount a real defense is allowed for in the non-aggression principle. I wanted to talk about some ideas how that might look what might work best and least, and maybe in the process I can bring forward some military concepts that have just never been explored before in history. I'm not a military man, so that's a strike against me, but someone's gotta come up with these ideas. And I have been in one war, if only briefly. I do think military history is fascinating. I like to play war games and try out some of these theories in, in those games. The dominant theory uh, that I have, and that I guess I would try to see put into action if I were the president of a free country, the dominant theory is what I call individualist guerrilla. Those two words don't really cover it, because what I'm really talking about is an organized, I guess very loosely organized, defense and or counterattack type process through which a free country would deploy or maybe just assist independent one-man armies. They might be operating in an official capacity on behalf of the free country they're defending, but they would have wide autonomy within a series of parameters. So you would you would set out a set of set out a set of uh, rules of engagement for all, you know, say 4,000 of the rangers, if you want to call them that, that, that uh, work for your country as a sort of quasi-military. These people would be paid maybe out of state money, but that state money, since the state would not be allowed to tax in a free country, it would have to, you know, the state would have to be receiving money through donations, the organization, the military or paramilitary organization would have to be receiving money through donations. And the state government, or the national government, I guess it would be, in the event it were invaded by a neighboring state or country, would sort of set all 4,000 of these one-man armies loose. It would say to them, uh, you're now authorized to attack any soldier of that country that is on, is within our boundaries, and any military-related property belonging to that state, no matter the location. Here's a list of things you're not allowed to do, and the list might include torture, uh, execution of prisoners, uh, risking of civilian lives, or at least I should say risking of bystander lives damage to bystander property. I believe a British order to this effect went out to British troops operating in Holland during World War II. I thought that was kind of cool. Uh, but I guess according to a, a Bridge Too Far, the book A Bridge Too Far, um, uh, some British soldiers basically gave down, put down their lives to just because they were not willing to destroy certain Dutch, Dutch homes. Anyway, uh, you know, the operational directives could go even further than that, forbidding the killing of enemy soldiers even, and just waging a pure uh, property-related war. Now, again, 
most of us wouldn't want to be in the position that the Dutch resistance was in or that the Maquis or the frontier air in, uh, I'm butchering the pronunciation there, in World War I in Belgium, but the, uh, these are all, these were all spontaneous guerrilla movements that weren't really planned for in advance. I think what a guerrilla movement could do if uh, that were the plan from the beginning. Uh, sort of like, you know, supposedly Tito's plan was to, you know, if invaded by the Soviet Union, the plan was to simply retreat into the mountains in Bosnia and wage a guerrilla warfare. Don't bother trying to defend the borders. There's also a theory that Henri Puissant was planning on doing that in World War II uh, in Switzerland, if invaded. Are you a liberty activist willing to be on the front line against socialism? Freekeen.com would like you to consider moving here to Keen. While Keen may have the largest number of liberty-oriented media outlets in the entire state of New Hampshire, there's still a need for more activists. Can you help them? Visit freekeen.com to see what's happening.